What about the obturator nerve? Now, if you're like me, the obturator nerve is probably not something that you've given a whole lot of thought to over your career. I don't know about you, and <clears throat> it may just be a, a function of my uh, clinical and diagnostic skills, but I'm not sure that I've ever really seen uh, an obturator nerve dysfunction. Uh, maybe it's because I'm not looking for that, but uh, I don't know. The AMA guides uh, do describe uh, permanent impairment due to injury of the obturator nerve. So let's uh, talk about the obturator nerve. The obturator nerve comes from the anterior divisions uh, of L2, L3, and L4 nerve roots and its greatest contribution uh, comes in from the L3 nerve root. Greatest contribution is from L3. And the obturator nerve descends through the fibers uh, of the psoas major just like the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve and just like the uh, femoral nerve. And that makes sense. I mean how else is it going to get from the spine uh, out into the body. It has to come out from behind uh, the psoas muscle. And as it uh, descends through the psoas, it emerges from the medial border uh, of the psoas. This is the medial border of the psoas, not the lateral border like the femoral nerve and the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. It comes from the medial border near the brim of the pelvis. And from there it passes behind the common iliac arteries and then on the lateral side of the internal iliac artery and the ureter. And then it runs along the lateral wall of the lesser pelvis to the upper part of the obturator foramen. So picture uh, the skeletal pelvis. Have the left and right obturator staring you straight in the face like a, like a pair of eyeballs. And picture the upper part uh, of the obturator foramen. That's where it emerges from the pelvis uh, to then enter the leg. So as it passes uh, through the obturator foramen, uh, it enters the thigh through the obturator canal, and then it divides into an anterior and a posterior branch, which at first uh, are separated by some fibers of the obturator externus muscle which the obturator nerve pierces as it passes through the obturator foramen and then later down uh, the anterior and posterior branches are separated uh, by the adductor brevis muscle. So the anterior branch uh, as it leaves the pelvis in front of the obturator externus it then descends in front of the adductor brevis and behind the pectineus and adductor longus. So it passes between those muscles. It passes between uh, the adductor brevis and the adductor longus, with the adductor longus being more uh, anterior or more superficial. <coughs> and then uh, at the lower border, of the adductor longus, it communicates with the anterior cutaneous and saphenous branches of the femoral nerve, uh, forming what we described earlier as the peripatellar plexus, sensory, a plexus of sensory nerves that provide for sensation around the knee. Now, near the obturator foramen, uh, the nerve gives off an articular branch to the hip joint consistent with Hilton's law. Then behind the pectineus it distributes branches to the adductor longus uh, and gracilis and usually also to the adductor brevis and in occasional cases uh, it'll give a slip or a twig to the pectineus muscle although recall that the pectineus is usually innervated uh, by the femoral nerve and that's a convention that the AMA guides adopts and I'll point that out when we get to uh, some diagrams from the uh, AMA guides. And then uh, the obturator nerve 
then descends on the femoral artery and it uh, provides for autonomic uh, supply to the femoral artery and this is this is interesting the obturator nerve provides for autonomic motor supply to the femoral artery and what would be the function of that autonomic supply well it's to control the diameter uh, of the femoral artery control the diameter through its action on the smooth muscle uh, found in the femoral artery okay then the posterior branch <coughs> excuse me the posterior branch of the obturator nerve then pierces the anterior part of the obturator externus muscle and it sends a twig that supplies motor supply to the obturator externus muscle it then passes behind the adductor brevis on the front of the adductor magnus picture that passes behind the adductor brevis but on front of the adductor magnus and from there it divides into numerous muscular branches which are distributed to those two muscles to the adductor magnus uh, and the adductor brevis and then it usually uh, gives off an articular filament uh, to the knee joint now <coughs> the AMA guides give sort of a mixed consideration to the sensory function of the obturator nerve now occasionally uh, the communicating branch of the uh, uh, of the obturator nerve uh, communicates with the anterior cutaneous nerve and the saphenous branches of the femoral nerve and continues down as a cutaneous branch uh, to be known as the cutaneous branch uh, of the obturator nerve and so in in those cases where there is this communicating branch this communicating branch uh, emerges from beneath the lower border of the adductor longus it descends along the uh, margin of the sartorius to the medial side of the knee where it pierces the deep fascia communicates with the savinus nerve and is distributed to the skin of the tibial side of the leg as low down as the middle part of uh, the lower leg and the AMA guides <coughs> show this uh, as being distributed uh, both to the medial aspect of the knee uh, slightly above the knee and then the posterior medial aspect of the knee slightly to uh, below the knee so the obturator nerve uh, like the femoral nerve is a mixed nerve carries uh, both motor and sensory fibers and recall that the obturator nerve is largely uh, an L3 supplied nerve <coughs> so the motor the muscles supplied by uh, the obturator nerve uh, is occasionally the pectineus uh, occasionally that is now the pectineus muscle is one of the hip adductor muscles but unlike the other four hip adductor muscles the pectineus is generally uh, supplied by the femoral nerve and that's a convention that the AMA guides uh, adopts um, so the pectineus is involved in resisted hip adduction or I should say that's how you would test the function of the pectineus muscle by testing for strength of resisted hip adduction ADD duction and then from there uh, the obturator nerve quite simply innervates all the remaining uh, hip adductor muscles it innervates the adductor brevis the adductor longus the adductor magnus it innervates the gracilis and it also innervates the obturator 
uh, externus. So it's this function that characterizes the obturator nerve. The obturator nerve is involved with hip adduction. And that makes it quite easy to test. And it also makes lesions uh, of the obturator nerve quite easy to detect. And we'll summarize these functions uh, when we get to the end of this section regarding the uh, anatomy and physiology of these named nerves. But just as a pre-review, recall that we said the femoral nerve is uh, uh, completely involved with knee extension as pure femoral nerve function. Well, here we have another example of pure obturator nerve function with its uh, contribution uh, to resisted hip adduction. So that's uh, the type of examination maneuver that we're going to focus on when it comes time to uh, test for the obturator nerve. Then for the sensory function of the obturator nerve, uh, the anterior branch, recall that the anterior branch uh, of the obturator nerve joins with the anterior cutaneous and saphenous branches uh, of the femoral nerve and it supplies sensation to uh, the medial aspect of the lower thigh uh, and the medial knee. And as we're going to see, the AMA guides, um, they do diagram this uh, distribution of sensation and they ascribe this distribution of sensation to the obturator nerve. However, with damage or injury to the obturator nerve and even complete loss uh, of sensation to the medial aspect of the lower thigh and the medial knee, uh, there is no permanent impairment provided for uh, by the AMA guides. Uh, and so, as I said earlier, the AMA guides give mixed uh, credit, I guess is the word, mixed credit uh, to the obturator nerve. And we'll talk more about that uh, in our next two hours. So where can the obturator nerve uh, then become compressed? Well, the obturator nerve is rarely injured uh, alone and in isolation. Uh, injury can occur uh, with pelvic trauma and with associated fractures. And in those cases, in the case of severe trauma, can affect both the anterior and posterior branches. Uh, the obturator nerve can be uh, injured during delivery the delivery of a baby uh, as a result of compression of the nerve between the head of the fetus and the bony structures of the pelvis, but we're not going to see that really in a workers' compensation situation. Or uh, the nerve can be injured as a consequence of compression of the nerve between a, a tumor, uh, an intrapelvic tumor, uh, and the bony pelvis. For example, uh, where the obturator nerve uh, leaves the pelvis at the superior, op superior aspect of the obturator foramen, uh, conceivably a mass or a tumor in that area could compress the nerve uh, up against the rim of the obturator foramen and, and cause a, uh, um, an obturator nerve injury at that site. But as I said, uh, these are probably not likely things that we're going to see uh, in the workers' compensation setting. Um, entrapment uh, of the obturator nerve can occur uh, in the obturator canal during surgery or also, uh, like the femoral nerve, can also happen uh, during the course of hip replacement surgery. Uh, other, other potential causes of obturator nerve injury include uh, malposition of the lower limb for prolonged periods. Uh, in athletes, sometimes the nerve can become entrapped in a hypertrophied uh, adductor magnus muscle. Um, and in pregnant women, uh, or, or in uh, the delivery of a baby, uh, the baby can have an obturator nerve injury if there's an abnormal positioning of the baby's uh, lower limb during a difficult delivery. And then finally, um, 
in the case of an inflammatory process that involves the adductor brevis muscle, uh, that can uh, rarely uh, entrap the anterior branch uh, of the obturator nerve as the uh, anterior branch passes over the adductor brevis muscle. And then, as I said earlier, uh, in the case of either a hypertrophied uh, adductor magnus muscle in the case of athletes or possibly with a uh, deep contusion to either the adductor brevis or adductor magnus muscles, those uh, types of mechanisms of injury can also uh, result in injury to the adductor brev uh, I'm sorry, uh, to the obturator nerve. But the chances of us seeing those types of situations in a workers' compensation setting uh, are rare. So what kind of physical exam findings would you expect to see uh, with an obturator nerve injury? Well, findings are pretty much going to be the same uh, regardless of the location <coughs> of the injury. So. On physical exam, uh, you're going to see that your examinee is going to have some kind of a gait disturbance. He's going to have difficulty with ambulation uh, because he's going to have an unstable leg on the side of, an, of the involvement. Uh, on the side of obturator nerve injury, that leg's going to be unstable. So you would pick this up uh, as a gait disturbance. Um, with anterior branch entrapment, uh, symptoms are going to include groin pain, uh, particularly groin pain that's exacerbated by activity. Uh, pain may radiate down the medial aspect of the thigh towards the knee if the uh, anterior sensory branch is involved. Um, because of disability and loss of function of the leg, the examinee is going to have uh, an in inability to jump and he's going to have weakness in the leg that worsens with exercise. <clears throat> um, as a late finding, um, the examinee is going to have a loss of hip adduction due to paralysis or paresis of any of the hip adductor muscles. Uh, a gait uh, finding may be that they walk with an externally uh, rotated foot. And then motor findings are going to include wasting uh, of the adductor muscles of the thigh and really uh, because of multiple overlap and multiple muscles that contribute to hip adduction, uh, a precise determination of the location of lesion is difficult to uh, definitively uh, determine. However, regardless of the level of the lesion, uh, all lesions will, to either greater or lesser extent, uh, affect hip adduction.